Listen to my body. Slow down my breathing and my heart rate. Kiss Emmanuel and Robin. Do one final equipment check and leave this world for two hours. The two hours needed to reach a depth of 100 meters in the icy waters of the Arctic. I share my life with Emmanuel, and we've become specialists in diving under ice. Our passion took us underneath the North Pole, where we explored the hidden face of the pack ice, like never before. Now we've decided to go much deeper, to a world where man has never ventured. Diving in the depths of Greenland's icy waters, this kind of craziness is why I love Gila. We sold our house and our car to buy a sailing boat, the Y. When our son Robin was born, we could have taken a step back, but seeing him grow up amidst the whales is better than a dream. For an adventure such as this, the three of us couldn't just go with our dog kayak. We had to extend our family. For 15 years, Martin has been an accomplice on Guylaine's maddest dives. Julien and Romain are scientists, a physiologist to monitor the extreme dives, and a marine biologist. Priscilla, who's a chemist, works with them. Her partner, Luca, manages logistics. Anthony is the skipper, whilst first mate, Daniel, is an old hand at sailing between the icebergs. And there's me, Manu. I've been sailing around these Arctic seas for 10 years, and I make sure the expedition goes smoothly. We're going to explore 2,500 kilometers of the Greenland coast to document this little known underwater world. Added to this is my dream, my personal quest to carry out the first dive to a depth of 100 meters in these icy waters. From the first few miles to the south of Greenland, the ton of diving equipment that we hauled aboard is disappearing under the freezing spray. Ice begins to swallow the Y and its rigging. We wait for the calm that comes with the first icebergs. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius. Time for Guillain to dive into the unknown. There's this whole part of what we're doing here breaking new ground where we're not in control. That's the essence of exploring. It's when you don't really know what to expect, when you don't know exactly where you're venturing. Everything is there to be invented. This frozen world and scuba diving were never made for each other. The gas works we have on our back weighs more than 70 kilograms. Six bottles, three different gases, which feed an air recycler governed by two computers. We wanted to become fish, but we look more like astronauts. It's a joy to be under the ice again. Though the odd diver may go deeper than 100 meters in temperate waters, nobody has ever dived as deep in water of minus one Celsius. One might think that these temperatures are hardly conducive to life. 
And yet it's here, under the water, that the flora and fauna are the most abundant, the most brightly colored. A world in stark contrast to the monochromatic landscape on the surface. A fragile world, where a change of just a few degrees can wipe out everything. I never dive without my camera. My pictures are an inventory of these ecosystems living on borrowed time. But for us, today, our door to the depths is closed at 50 meters. We're not ready to go any further. We emerge virtually hypothermic. We spent barely an hour in the water. It was torture. To reach 100 meters will take two hours. This adventure is also a unique chance to study human physiology. There's hardly any data on deep dives in extremely cold water. We cover our bodies in sensors, we swallow miniature transmitters that divulge all our secrets. Son rythme ventilatoire, 19. Julian is also studying the bubbles of air that form in our blood when we come back up from the depths. These bubbles are the diver's enemy. The more there are, the greater risk of them getting stuck in a vein or a joint and triggering a decompression accident. With each dive at each new depth, we watch and measure a body's reactions. We're actually writing dive protocols as no one else has, in the hope that they can take us to the limit we've set ourselves. Heart-wise, there's nothing much for now. We'll see. But for now, the Y continues on its way up the western coastline of Greenland. I take the helm. I love the purity of these hostile landscapes, where sea merges with sky, where there's not even a wrinkle, where icebergs as far as the eye can see are like mirages on the horizon. Before meeting Gina, and diving together under the North Pole, I was a sailor. So I've become an explorer. This time I won't dive with him, but this expedition will allow me to return to my world along with my family. Robin is two years old. I hope these animals will jump out of the book and come to meet him. I wish his life to start with this kind of encounter. Is he there? Didn't we see one like that? Can you see the seal on the ice? Yes, there's a seal on the little iceberg. He's taking a nap. Hello, little seal. Isn't he pretty? Can you see his claws? I've often been asked if it was a good idea to bring Robin out of the world for so long. But when I see us all here, I know this is building our family's happiness. Should we say goodbye for now? You want to go back to the boat now? Yeah. Should we look in your book? These shared moments are part of our expedition. But there's no time for daydreaming. Back aboard, I see Martin and the surface crew before our first dive to 60 meters. It's between 30 and 40 minutes above 50, an essential step on the road to the great depths. Isolated and far from any help, we must be capable of handling any situation on our own. If the inflatable sausage surfaces, you send the complete line, because it means we really do have a problem. Julien studying their physiological data. 
I know Gila and Martin are relying on me to curb their enthusiasm, but how can I do that if I'm not in contact with them during the dive? Martin and I have a similar temperament. We both like to push the envelope. And Manu isn't like that. She has a view from the outside, which is interesting. <laughs> When I dive, I think I'm a lot more cautious than Guylain and Martin. I take fewer risks in general. And anyway, whatever you do in the heat of the action, you don't worry. It's a lot harder to remain one step removed. There's nothing trivial about sending two guys under a big iceberg. We can see very well that little bits fall off. It might look stable, but... To dive down to 60 meters, we've chosen this huge iceberg with the dizzying slopes. The descent is like a fall. I like it to be long, as long as possible. It is slow, sometimes painfully so, because of the cold in these waters at minus one degree and the pressure that's crushing my eardrums and sinuses. At 50 meters, I'm sinking. I'm passing through a new door. At 60 meters, I arrive at the bottom. thousand-year-old iceberg. Time seems to stand still, but suddenly stress is added to the cold. Stand. My heartbeat speeds up. The iceberg is cracking. These noises and the notion that it could collapse turn my blood to ice. isn't an option. A glance at my computer tells me everything. There are 41 minutes left at this stop. We're stuck. The seconds become minutes. The minutes become hours. You can't escape from the depths. I heard three cracks, really loud. Rather frightening. Not reassuring. It was stressful. Martin and I looked at each other. I think we were thinking the same thing, and we didn't discuss it for long. Did you hear that? What? It's just starting up. It's cranking. That was a crack. A hot day like this, the snow and ice is changing too. It can get a little dicey. We had the stop to do, so we were a bit stuck. We didn't do any extra. You tell yourself, it better not split on my side. The further we go, the more icebergs there are. 
Now we're entering the territory where they're born, Disco Bay, where some of the last survivors of the polar fauna still live. Here, they're there. They're just there. When I was a little girl, my daddy bought me a book with right whales and narwhals in it. And a big part of my motivation for this expedition to Greenland was being able to see some narwhals and right whales. Arfevik. The right whale. Second biggest whale after the blue whale. It can live 200 years, and we almost exterminated it in less than a century. It's a privilege to watch it feeding peacefully on the surface. A rare meeting that I'm happy to share with Robin. She's the prettiest. To explore most of the west coast of Greenland before it freezes again at the end of autumn, we're closely following the retreating ice. There's a risk we'll get stuck. There's a compression ridge. It's really dense. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to pass. All station, all stations, all station. We are stuck in the ice. We are stuck in the ice. We request assistance to help us to try to get out of the ice. I added a little polite phrase saying, don't worry, we're all right, but if you could help, that'd be cool. <laughs> and now there's radio silence. <laughs> what a professional. <laughs> After a first night stuck in the ice, rather than mope, Marden and I snap into action. We absolutely must do more dives to gain confidence and experience. We're aiming for 70 meters. Lion's mane jellyfish. Cyanea capillata. Limacina helicina. Our descent is punctuated by close encounters with things from another world. It takes us 10 minutes to reach a depth of 70 meters. We stay there for 25 minutes. We are numb. Then comes the ascent and the stops, the interminable stops. Almost two hours before we can come out, Time for our bodies to eliminate the gas that we were breathing under pressure lower down. Where's Guilin? Where's Guilin? That was a great day. Was it, honey? It's funny to think of all the polar expeditions in the late 19th, early 20th century, mooring on the ice floe, walking out onto the pack ice like in a dream. This is our time to ourselves with the dive. Go, Tonio, I'm hot! Yeah. 
Antonio, there's a Greenlander fishing boat coming towards us. Pass the radio, I'll try to call them. Thank you. If it comes, that's brilliant. He's not answering the radio. The ease with which he cuts through the ice is amazing. He's not scared. Have you seen the state of his hull? Pretty good, huh? What? So cool. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yes, please. Thank you very much. It's too thick for us. I'm trying to back off to give him some room, but it's hard. You can follow the trail. The Y is a sailing boat equipped for diving in the Arctic, but it's not an icebreaker. The fishermen open the way for us. In these isolated, hostile regions, helping each other is a way of life. We've now found our cruising speed up to five dives per week. We're feeling more and more at ease. We're also accumulating pictures of Arctic underwater life. Human divers are so rare in this part of the world that each time the camera rolls, I have the satisfaction of documenting this unknown universe. Roma, a marine biologist, often dives with us. Whenever he can, he goes off sampling sediments and seashells that he then sends to labs. These shells are fascinating. They're like sensors, environmental black boxes, they record any changes in their environment for periods stretching over dozens, even hundreds of years. And sometimes there are encounters that are a little more exciting than others. Today, crinoids appear before me. I'm captivated by this animal, disguised as a plant, but the most enthusiastic is Roma. You please now? Are you happy? You happy, Roma? Yeah! You're too happy! When you think that the water is minus one, <laughs> we're playing like it was the Mediterranean. Roman, is there enough to eat or is it all for science? For now, it's all for science. Oh boy. Underwater, they're really beautiful. There are samples taken from the Natural History Museum. I hadn't seen any before, and there were entire fields of crinoids. Before we set off, they said, if you find any at all, that's great. These guys were on their way up, and they moaned at me. They told you to grab some? I went back down two meters to get some before we left. The Natural History Museum is studying the evolution of this animal, which has adapted to almost all the seas in the world over thousands of years. They've even found crinoid fossils that date back to the days of the dinosaurs. But for Romain, the exception slips into the routine of his samples. On top of his bivalves, he's painting a chemical portrait of the Greenland waters. He's doing an environmental inventory of 2,500 kilometers of coastline. It's like taking a photo of a landscape. Snap, and you freeze an instant of life. Nap time? A photograph of Greenland, just as Robin is beginning his life. Night, night. Good night, see you later. See, they're doing scientific samplings. See you later, love. Kiss. 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 
kiss. Have a lovely nap, darling. Here and there, the storm is rising. The sea is becoming white. We're not thinking about diving now, just somewhere to shelter. To try and forget the rumble of the storm outside, I show the team Gila and Martin's images. No one's seen them yet. They're the only ones who have explored the depths. It's like we're in outer space. <laughs> and there I was, I was a bit more stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes, I was screaming. <laughs> what I don't understand is why didn't you go over and shake him? It's loaded. No applause for the security aspect. Uh, that's a red car. <laughs> but it is nice. Suddenly in the night, the alarm makes us jump from our quilts. It's the mooring alarm. The anchor's dragging. We're drifting. Daniel checks. The anchor is slipping. The Y is threatening to crash against the rocks. Can you see the bank? We can see the edge behind it. Shall I put it in gear? It's not in gear. Come on. It looks like it'll hold. The chain is really tight now. We're good. You see the wind there? It's gone back down to 50 knots. That's good. Unfortunately, it's often when you don't expect it that it falls. What was the maximum we had earlier? We had 75. I thought we were heading for the rocks. If we can't hold our mooring, we're in danger of finding ourselves really in the shit. I thought of 10,000 things at the same time. <laughs> the joys of vacationing at sea. Every time, the return to calm is a deliverance. We've notched up around 100 dives. We've gone beyond 70 meters. Our equipment seems ready for the next stage. But what about our bodies? Our body temperature goes down to 34 degrees Celsius at the end of the dive. That's just two degrees from serious hypothermia. Our hands are no warmer than 13 degrees. But what worries Julian the most, hey, take the headset and listen, are air bubbles forming in our blood. The gases under high pressure that we breathe at the bottom don't seem to be completely dissolving despite the decompression stops. That's the noise of your heart and pulmonary artery, which uh, make small gurgling or hissing noises. This danger could get worse on deeper dives. I don't like the areas of uncertainty. Grade one, you hear a bubble every now and again, and grade four, in fact, you don't hear your heart. That is, you don't hear the crack anymore, you just hear a big gurgle of bubbles that masks the noise of your heart. Seeking into the unknown also means exposing our bodies to the unknown. How can we stand it? At 80 meters, I'm feeling nine times atmospheric pressure. I can go that far because my equipment limits the risks of nitrogen narcosis. 
But spending so many hours in that abyss-like darkness, I could easily let myself slip into dreams, which would quickly turn into a nightmare. Never forget. Control. Control. Always control everything. What wakes me up is the biting cold. Suddenly, I'm nothing more than these hands and feet, suffering like mad at the decompression stop. Robin, are you worried when Daddy is underwater? Does it scare you? Are you worried? You mustn't be. Daddy's very careful when he goes underwater. Call the Y, Victor. Please, drop your camera. Victor. Why to Zodiac? Why to Zodiac? We've got an inflatable with distress ribbons, so we're launching the emergency procedure and sending the decompression line. Aren't they answering? No, there's no reply. Why here? Was that Lucas who called? No, it's Roman. We have an inflatable with a pinnet, so we've sent the safety line. Don't worry, anyone. Just keeping you informed. Okay, that's a pain. It wasn't planned. We sent the decompression line. Wasn't it a dive over 70? Go back a bit. Why here? Obviously... Try to stay there. When you know any more, take time out to give us details. In gear. That's it. What happened? This time, Guilain really scared me. Over nothing. My pennant mistake obviously created some stress at the surface. Communication between the two worlds isn't always easy. I think I forgot the small one. Yeah. Fish. Daddy's gonna change and be right back, okay, love? Do it with the mask. The mask and the noise. While Robin sets off on his own underwater exploration, Guilain gets ready to dive for a scientific team which is studying one of the biggest mysteries of Greenland's waters. Romain has organized this meeting off the coast of Kekertaswark. John, John, this is why. Do you read me? Hello, John here. Hi, John, this is Roman. Uh, I guess uh, you are the red uh, fishing boat? Yes, you're right, and you're right behind us. Uh, we're going to, uh, to come closer to your ship. These scientists are relying on us to film the mysterious Greenland shark, as it's never been filmed before. John Stephenson is a Greenland shark specialist and has studied it for several years on international projects. Very happy to see you. Fortunately, we have no sharks. Okay. So yesterday we nearly lost two lines because the ice started drifting. John crisscrosses the sea to capture and study them. The way they swim along with their behavior remains mysterious. Our images from the depths may bring some answers. The, the sharks we caught three years ago, we put satellite tags on those with depth, depth uh, sensors, depth data loggers, and uh, they went down to 1,700 meters. 1,700 meters? <coughs> They're just following the bottom. Oh, okay. They, they stay at two or 300 meters for a long time, and then they dive. So I don't, we don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. We don't know where they are. Really like you guys to film the Greenland shark in its natural habitat and when it's when it's swimming, natural swimming behavior, because there are hardly any images at all from from the, the field with this. And then we would also like to, to know more about how is it maneuvering if it has this very poor vision. Can it actually see or or how is it behaving? But to film this famous shark, we first have to find one. In the meantime, we decide to stay here for a few days, to wait patiently for one of these enigmatic predators to appear. Well, 
there's a parasite on each eye. So you want to cut that eye so, five centimeters. And it makes a pain two meters and five. So this is the Greenland shark, which can measure up to seven meters long. Yeah. Much more excited than I did yesterday when we weren't catching anything. So there's the parasite. Ah, the white one. It's yeah. a copper part. Yes. Yeah. But it has some claws that it's yeah. attaching to the cornea. Yeah. This shark, of which we know so little, can supposedly weigh one and a half tons, live 200 years, and is virtually blind. You see, we can see its mouth, it's open. Then they'll take out the hook, and it'll swim away. And Daddy will go into the water to film it as it swims away. You impressed? I set off. I strap on the camera with a certain apprehension. Very little is known about the behavior of this formidable predator, apart from the fact that it can bite through fish three meters long. Okay, it's all yours. But taking pictures is going to be a problem. It's spring and plankton have invaded the surface waters. I can barely make out the sharks swimming away. This time, I won't bring back the shots John dreamed of. The disappointment is quickly forgotten, and the Y resumes its course northwards. Each expedition has its quota of the unexpected. Planned events that don't happen, unforeseen encounters, but the next will boost our morale. One hundred and fifty kilometers from the first village, a family of Inuit hunters comes alongside our boat. Hello. Hello. Did you see any narwhals? Yes. Yes. Uh, over there. On the way. Do you want? Do you want to visit the boat? Yeah, good, good. This encounter is incredibly fortunate. Welcoming them, interacting. Yes. Hunting now yes, hunting. This. Yes. And this. That's uh, September to Di hunting. Uh, yes, September. December. Yes. Not now. Not now. Yes. And yes. Seals. Yes. That many. Many. Yes. Yes. Many, many. Now, whales have always fascinated me. I've dreamed about them since I was small. Timotheus understood this. He offers to help us find some. <laughs> We follow Timotheus' lead. Meetings with Nawals are very rare and always fleeting. But in this unreal atmosphere, nothing seems impossible. We're right in the middle of narwhals. Hey. 
and my heart is pounding in my chest. It's one of the wildest things I've seen in my life. Gila and I think the dream should come true. Today, those narwhals were one of my most beautiful childhood dreams. But Gila still has some way to go for his. Julien has suddenly interrupted the dive program. The results of his research into decompression are worrying him. In general, Martin produces fewer bubbles than you, markedly so. And you had an outgassing incident. You have a high grade of bubbles circulating, which shows that for you, decompression is stressful. You have a 10 times greater risk than if you didn't produce bubbles. Risk of what? Of having an accident. You have ten times more chance of having an articular or neurological accident. But there's always a chance. My job, even though it's outside my brief, is to keep you informed over time. Diving is risky. Since they're talking about my life, I'd like to see if this is confirmed. At the same time, you don't have to be a guinea pig. If those dives present a real risk, then it's as well to know how to lessen the risk before it grows. <coughs> yeah, but... You agree with that? Obviously, we're not talking about a 30-meter dive. I'm asking Julian if he agrees. Loads of guys have done a thousand dives without knowing, and bang! Out they go. All these guys were sure of themselves. They thought they were giants. But when it strikes you, you don't know what's hit you. On this kind of project, we wouldn't normally have you. We wouldn't have wondered about problems of decompression, and we would have said, well, we'll close our eyes, like everyone else. Because there is a risk, but no one acknowledges it. No one measures it. We're lucky to have someone who can measure it and who can quantify it. Is the risk big enough for us to stop playing guinea pigs and add stops? It's cumulative. Repeated dives, fatigue, lack of hydration. And we can't evacuate as we could do back home. But if I don't speak up, then there's no point in doing this job. We're trying a new protocol at 80 meters by extending the decompression stops. But how can I dive with this doubt within me? My heart beats for this underwater life. But today, it's beating bubbles. All I see is bubbles. Bubbles in my dreams, bubbles in my blood. My whole life is going up in bubbles. Nothing. Can't hear a thing. Zero. How many did you get? Zero. Really? Zero on the heart, including while doing squats. Great. Just sounds. He's made no bubbles. I got zeros all around. Cumulative at rest. All zeros is a great score. I love zeros. Yeah, I heard that. I passed the flying zeros. All zeros. I relaxed at the last moment and it worked. I was losing and now... Stop it now. All I got is zeros. Four zeros, right? Let's put the small back on his face. <laughs> Adding 20 minutes of the last stop was enough for my body to rid itself of these fiendish bubbles.
Around me, the kids are playing football, having fun. Now I need to decompress after this bubble business. I need to breathe to get away. I need to dive. It's running down my leg. It's really pleasant. Manu has invited all the divers on board for a pleasure dive, our first one in Kanak Bay. But she has hardly begun when suddenly he's there, the Greenland shark. I can't believe my eyes. What's he doing here? He should be at a far greater depth. The shark bumps into a wall without even seeing it. Another appears, unconcerned by our flashes. He looks blind. But even though he may look meek and mild, he must definitely have an extraordinary sense of smell and capacity for acceleration. My heart is thumping wildly. Times like this are amazing. These pictures are amazing. Greenland sharks have never been filmed in a natural habitat like this. This is exactly what John and his team were dreaming of. Only Martin and I are capable of following him. The others are stuck at 30 meters. We follow his slow waltz, as if all that we had learned during our 150 dives suddenly made sense. Beyond 80 meters, we let him go on his way. We haven't gone further than that yet. You swam with sharks? Yes, two of them. No shit! No, really. I've got the videos. It's absolutely gorgeous at the bottom. It's the best animal encounter of the expedition. The rarest, the most original. I'm really happy. Luca, Tonio and I began to come back up. We were taking photos. Suddenly, Martin bounces up, all over excited. It was like he wanted us to watch. He put on a show for us. I think that's one of the best dives of my life. He was above us in the angle of the sun. It was wild. Like in the films where you see the shark's shadow. It was crazy. It's impossible not to share this with Robin. As he grows, he'll find his own road. But I already know that there's a dream within him that was born here. The shark which took Guilain to the depths didn't just give him pictures. It brought him calmness and clarity. Stop dreaming about it and embrace this dive to 100 meters. Unlock the secrets of these icy waters. Continue in our own way the work of explorers in centuries past. After six months spent diving down ever deeper, it is time to acknowledge the end of our journey. Despite it being habit, these long minutes of descent in the dark are always a disturbing moment when anxiety mingles with the excitement of discovery. 70 meters, 80, 90, a new door opens, the last on this expedition. Here we are, 100 meters. 
Martin and I might feel invisible for a second, but the first sculpin that comes to welcome us escapes to depths that to us remain forbidden. We stay at this depth for 10 minutes, the culmination of months of diving to develop new polar exploration techniques. Then, as we come back up, we come across this explosion of life and color. These organisms have invented a world at minus one degree, and there they flourish unfettered. I'm glad to have risen to this challenge with Martin. Our samples and our images will enable us to write a new page in our knowledge of these icy worlds. Another note? Yes. <laughs> what did he say? 102.2. And a heart. Throughout the months, and throughout our 200 dives, we've opened a door to the icy depths. The first encounters were marvelous, but tomorrow there remains a whole unknown world to discover. <laughs>